Hi, this is Paul Palmer, and I'm back with Natasha Totorovic Cohen. Hi, Natasha. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I hope you're doing well today. I yeah. think... oh. Excited to speak with you yet again. <laughs> yeah, I think we've uh, we've seen quite a bit of each other recently. I wonder why that is. Maybe yeah. it's because we've we've got to do everything virtually, and and we can do everything virtually between us. Um. So today I thought I'd talk about bias. I thought we'd talk together about the influences, what it means. So the, the biggest area that bias for me comes up in pharmaceutical manufacturing is when you talk about root cause analysis. And people say, oh, well, just go do the root cause analysis. And somebody goes and does it on their own. And you think, well, that's not good enough because they've got their own bias and they'll only come up with their own perspective. So, yeah, I think when we're asking people to think outside their thinking, we're setting them up to fail. Because bias really is understanding the filters that we have that prevent us from seeing things we can't see. Yeah. <laughs> we're blind to our own blindness. Well, for me, for example, if I was looking at investigating something that had an engineering failure, I'd probably really look at the calibration, but I wouldn't look at the preventative maintenance because I maybe don't understand the preventative maintenance. Maybe I would, but maybe I wouldn't look at the actual fit of the components or maybe the manufacturing side. But it, when you're getting together for root cause analysis, you always want a team that's got a multidisciplinary approach. But if, yeah. you, if you think about setting up systems, that's why you have different people review. Yeah, absolutely. We call that a whole brain syndicate because we can't see beyond our own biases. Now, typically when we think about biases, people are talking about bias in diversity and inclusion where we have prejudice or we are hiring one gender of a person over another gender or color. Um, but cognitive biases they're, uh, and they're different estimates. Some people say they're 80, some people say they're 150. But what it says is we are blind to the things that we're blind to, right? So as an example, we were talking about training in one of our conversations. Well, the very first thing that somebody learns, they are anchored to that. So the anchoring bias, for example, biases us in favor of the very first thing that comes in that we struggle to learn and then adopt, adopt. So if somebody's taking on a new job, a new role, and they're placed in an admin role in the quality department, then they're gonna get a different bias as they move forward compared with somebody that's put in goods in or customer service. Absolutely. So is that why people struggle to move and change between the areas? Yeah, because the way we have learned certain things sticks with us. So it's harder to let those ideas go and really embrace new ones. You know, we were talking about change earlier. Well, why is change so hard? Some of these biases come into effect. Some of our habits come into effect. And then employers and recruitment professionals emphasize that because they look at what the um, experience you've already got and they'll only consider you in a role that you're already experienced in so if you've got 10 years experience in the in the uh, pharmaceutical industry and you try and get yourself into the food industry well they say oh well you've got you've only got you've got 10 years outside of our industry so we're not interested you can't come and move to us yeah, exactly. You know, the biases, I think, we really need to pay more attention to. In, in my own work, um, we're constantly dealing with a couple of biases, I think, that are unique to what I do. Uh, and one is just seeing the developmental side of other human beings. And what we've learned in our research is that people are developmentally blind to one another. Uh, another piece we learned in our research is that we as humans have an environmental social blind spot. 
And so if you take a leader who's super successful, let's say in pharmaceuticals in one particular organization, and you move that leader to a different organization, there's a 50-50 chance that that highly successful leader won't be successful in that next role because that environmental social context in which that person needs to work has been changed and is different. It's, it's the culture of the organization. And we are blind to that social, environmental, cultural context. So bias really is trying to make visible to us the invisible of our own thinking. Very few people actually think about the way they think. That's, that's, um, that's made me think. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking about the thinking that you're thinking about? You're thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking about my biases. And I've been in the pharmaceutical industry now for 34 years. Um, majority of that, I was crossing over between pharmaceutical and medical devices uh, and merging the two, really. Um, and combination devices. So the combination devices have the pharmaceutical that's integrated within the, the medical device. Um, but that's where most of my experience is. But it's, well, it's you're, Yeah, you're referring to what you can see and your preferences and the way you structure these worlds and the integration of them. Having those biases serves you and serves your clients. And my biases are around seeing people stuff that other people don't see. Um, this cognitive bias thing is about making the invisible visible. It's about the stuff we don't see, that we're blind to not seeing. So how do you find out what you're blind to? Because you're blind to it. That's the trick. <laughs> So there are a lot of ways. Um, sometimes we get into conflict and sometimes those conflicts will reveal to us if we pause and open up and listen, something we didn't see, right? It, that's so it's why- working with it, others. It's working with others. others, brain syndicates, measurement, training, expanding our world and questioning, you know, is what I believe really a truth or is it just a belief that I adopted to make things convenient and now it needs a refresh. Interesting. So I need to set up a mastermind then of about a hundred people so you get all the different inputs. <laughs> Thank you, Natasha. That's really good. Talk to you again soon. Let's Have a good one, Paul. It's been fun. It's Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic-Cowan talking about cognitive bias.